Peace of the Lord be with you. I'm Malcolm Brookbanks, a member of the ministry team at St Mary's Attenborough. In last night's Agape service, we commemorated the Last Supper, a service in which we combine our Christian love for one another with our love of our Saviour. Today is Good Friday, and as Dawn said last Sunday, there can be no joyous Easter day without the pain and suffering of Good Friday. On this day, we recall the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear John's account, we focus on seven moments during that day. And as darkness still seeks to conquer the light, pause to reflect on our own sin and that of the world. Let us pray. God of the daytime and the nighttime, God of light and darkness, God of joy and sorrow, we worship you. Through you alone are we able to know that even in the darkest hours, hope is present through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Here is the man, Ecce Homo, the Roman prefect said as he offered Jesus to the crowd. No name now for this nuisance man whose silent threat causes such alarm. Yet even the no name, Eke Homo, has become a title for paintings, sculptors and verse over the centuries. A no name title becoming his title and a no name handing over soon to become his fate. Eke Homo. The word made flesh. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you? and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was a day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He 
He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Pilate, in a moment of bravery, insists on what has been written. No fudging, the king of the Jews it is. Even in the face of the crowd sometimes, it has to be said as it is. Even when the mood of the crowd threatens, sometimes it needs to be said as it is. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what scripture says. They divided my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. In a moment, all can change. That moment of fearful angelic promise. That moment of Bethlehem's birth pain and first nursing. That moment of fleeing. That moment of apparent rejection. That moment. So many moments with him. And now this moment. This handing over as the care given to him from birth to death is now received from him. And in this moment, a new home for him and for me. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfil scripture, 
I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Finished. So final a word. But what is ever really finished? Accomplished. Completed. Except life itself. A race run, a record set, only served to herald the next attempt. A new champion and holder of the prize. But once for all, a death of life, an obscuring of light, bringing darkness in its wake as a moment of completion is echoed with finality. Finished. The end. Extinguished light, but only till a brighter dawn. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Seven moments of the ordinary. And we pause and we wonder. In seven moments of ordinary violence, would we be different? Other days will soon come. The deep, deep sorrow of a garden visit met with a name. A fear-filled room gathering an unexpected visitor. A sad path home becoming a way back to hope. A picnic transformed into a place of restitution. But for now, the candles are extinguished and the darkness prevails. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now, there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden, there was a new tomb 
in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Christ of the cross, hold us in these moments as we wait for a garden vision, a mealtime revelation, a locked room blessing and a lakeside renewal. We go in peace. Amen.